Hey everyone, hope you're all doing very well. Welcome back to another one here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at, again this week, power supplies. Last week we've taken a look at PC power supplies. It's a great way to recycle those old units that you might have or know of somebody such as a family member or a friend that has an old PC that you can salvage the power supply from. But what happened if you take another approach, a completely different approach? And that's what I've done for this video. In fact, I receive this don't even know if it actually works right now this is actually a used power supply that I bought for 50 US dollars it is a mean well and it is a 1000 watt 24 volt power supply now what's unique about this power supply is it has the dual unit so you can see the fans here that is cooling each section of this power supply but at the front side of it what we have on one side is the output for the power that goes to the thing that you're trying to provide the power to and on the other side you have to hardwire your power cord in so the way that we're going to go through it in this video i'm going to show you what to do here and hopefully when we power it up this thing is actually working and we can get 24 volts from it. I'm gonna go through this, show you the parts that you're gonna need, and we're also gonna take a look at how we can actually wire it. Now, when it comes to these types of projects, if you wanna go and entertain something like this, I'd highly recommend that you have some form of background as it relates to what we're dealing with today, just to keep everything on the safe side. With that being said, let's look at specifically the first item that we're gonna need, and that ultimately is a power cord. Now, I got a couple options here, and one of them is you can use a PC power supply. You saw how many power supplies I have. I got over 10 power supplies that I have recycled from old machines that come from various amounts of people. So this is definitely something that we could salvage. We can cut the end of this off. This is about 10 feet long in total, which would be very good if we want to have that extended reach with our cord. We can cut this off right here. We can strip the end so we can get the individual leads. So we can use something like this. However, because I'm going to go and 3D print a piece, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a white power cord instead as opposed to many of the black cords that I have. But either way, color really doesn't matter. So whatever you choose, you just need to be able to bring power safely into the unit. Now, another thing that you'll want to do is you want to come up with something and it's probably easier if you have the skills to 3D print a piece or if you don't have that and you want to just create something like this you could do it out of wood or maybe 330 seconds would be fine where you can make this sort of shape which is really just a box that's gonna be the front cover that can actually just bolt in with these holes that you see on the side. So on this side, what we have is a strain relief hole where we can pop a strain relief. This is gonna allow us so that we don't end up pulling the power cord out from the power supply. That would be really bad if it was live. So we wanna be able to prevent that from happening. And this is how we do it. On the other side, we're gonna have the output. Now on this side, we got a positive and a negative. I've also created that as an indentation in here. So we can go and color it in if we want it to be a little bit more clear. Either way, we're gonna have the color of the actual prong, the bullet connector that comes out of here, we're gonna have that showing and it's gonna have the proper heat shrink around it. So that will be very visible. Now the other component that we're gonna need here is going to be the wire. Now the wire of choice that I've gone with is 10 gauge. I've chosen the 10 gauge wire because this is pretty much the biggest that you can fit into four millimeter bullet connectors. This will also provide plenty enough power capacity or amperage capacity for what we're intending to use it for. And of course, the length that we're gonna use is extremely small. So now this all, all this needs to do is to get press into our panel and then we're gonna have those on the other side. And then we just fasten these on the inside of the power supply unit. And this is how we're gonna actually carry the power out from the supply to the external part of the supply. And then I got a couple screws that I've sourced right from the RC bin. This looks like it's about the three millimeter in size. That's gonna be for pinning that front cover onto the power supply. And then we got our strain relief. Now you can take any strain relief that you have sitting around and they're pretty generic, made by many different companies. And you can go ahead and use that. So here's the power supply. We got our outputs on this side and we got all the inputs here. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a look at our cover and figure out how to push this through. Now I've sized it right very close there so it should be a nice snug fit. I've given myself a little ledge and I can push it through making sure that I got the right cord on the right side. So that actually pushed through very easily there and I got one of them done. Now I'm gonna do the exact same on the other side. I'm gonna push it through 
very easily and make sure it's about even with the other side. So that pushed through very good. What I'll now do is hit it with some CA glue just to make sure on the back side that we got it glued in place. And then I can throw heat shrink on the front here and get that so we don't have exposed metal contact leads. Now from here, all I need to do is make my connections to here and then we can hide the wire inside anywhere inside of this this case and I'm going to do the same thing now by getting the power cord we're going to use and I'm going to place that through this strain relief hole. So here's the white power cord with the three leads. We got our hot lead, we got our neutral lead, and we got our ground lead, the most important lead here that we have. And I'm gonna place each one of these leads through our strain relief hole and pull it all the way through and just about good right there. So now I have the leads through and I'm able to see the end of the power cord which is going to allow me to get the strain relief on there and then I'm going to squeeze the crap out of the strain relief to pop it into that hole. And once I have that done then I'm going to fasten that here. So off camera this is what I'll be doing. And there you can see all of those wires are attached and clamped down with those fasteners. Now we're ready to go and do the exact same thing on the other side here and then get that cover in place. Now with that complete, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna fasten this cover using these two screws, and then I'm gonna take some heat shrink, I'm gonna apply that to the four millimeter female bullet connectors here that we see sticking out, and I'm gonna then lastly put the strain relief in, and then this thing should be a sealed deal. So let's go ahead and get that done. Well guys, that's pretty much a complete unit. That's how easy it is for us to go and build up one of these. It's probably taken me about 20 minutes to go and assemble this assembly. It's probably taken me about 20 minutes also to design a part here that is extremely basic in order to cap off this section and allow us to have this kind of output. Uh, pretty soon the glue that we've used should dry and our heat shrink on there is going to also be glued down so it won't come loose and we can then go for a test run of this power supply. So that's what we're gonna do here in a couple more moments once things cool off. It's powered up, now I'm gonna go and see what's going on in terms of voltage here. We're getting a reading of 24.06, that's perfect. All right, so now let's go ahead and plug this guy in. Well guys, this here is the very first startup of this power supply. It is working, everything is working as predicted. There's a couple things that we can now do. We can go inside of there and adjust the adjustable voltage pot. We can adjust it so we get the maximum amount of voltage that we can get out of this 24 volt supply because every volt will matter. And the other thing worth mentioning is that I didn't put a power switch in here because I simply just unplug it when I'm done. That's what I've always done, whether it's a switch or not. Well guys, that pretty well does it. Hope you enjoyed it. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so I can see you guys in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next one.